Hello and welcome back. Um, as promised, in this video we are going to cover how we created the lift where we went on the lift, press F, the lift goes up, press F, and the lift comes back down. So let's go ahead and create a new folder so that we're just more organized and we're going to call this lift on F. I actually already have a folder name that I want to delete this one. What I'm going to do is, I already have a folder called lift on it because we've already made this. I want to delete this blueprint and um, we're going to go ahead and um, recreate it. So lift on F, I'm going to right click and say blueprint class actor lift on F. <coughs> Don't forget to open that. So first thing is the same old create a cube. Uh, give it a uh, size of uh, let's say 77 0.1 and let's go ahead and create a collision box for that so that we can calculate movements and hit results uh, so look you want to make it roughly as big and also don't forget to um, make this taller on the z-axis as well and don't forget to move it up because we don't want to have our uh, player activating the lift from the bottom of the lift and we also want the lift to activate if um, or recognize our character if the character jumps on the lift and that's that we can go to the event graph make sure we can delete all of this actually for now let's make sure that we select cube uh, sorry the box and we want a component beginning overlap and we want the component end overlap. And what we are going to say is on component begin overlap, cast a third person character. Same with this one. Cast a third person character. And if it is a third person character that enters the lift, then enable input. If it's not, then disable input. For player controller, we're going to say get player controller. And that can feed into both of them. Excellent. So now, when our character goes into the lift, it will activate uh, inputs, and once we leave, it will disable inputs. Excellent, so that's, that's that. What we're going to do is say F, meaning when I press F, then, then we do the same old, set timer, uh, sorry, not timer, uh, at timeline. It's very important you can type. At timeline, we can name this uh, Z movement, and double click on this, open it, and say go up, name it whatever you want. Sorry, uh, it's fine. And shift and click, shift and click. The first value is going to be zero, 00. The second value is going to be how many seconds is it going to take? Let's say three seconds to go a thousand units up. Then make sure you click on these two arrows here. Um, select both by holding control, right click on them, and say auto. And also get used to clicking on use last um, keyframe. We can close this. Now we have this go up value. Then we're going to say set actor location. Then we can go ahead and split that. What we also need is an event begin play. So let's say events begin play. I'm not doing anything new here. These are the things that we've done this before many, many times. So I'm going to create a new variable. Call this IL for initial location. Make sure it's a vector value. And set this to get actor location. So whatever the actor's location is at the beginning of the game, that will become our initial location. Then what we're going to do is say, oops, get initial location. X remains X, Y remains Y, Z plus float. Go up, the result becomes our Z location. If I compile, place the lift inside of my level, Where's my starting point? My starting point is over there. But I'm going to place the lift close to my starting point. So that we can go on it. Okay, when I go here, I press F. The lift goes up a thousand units in three seconds. I press F. Nothing else happens now. That's fine. <coughs> so we know at least this part is working, which is good. Now, what we are going to do is get the lift to come back. So we need to check to see if the actors look if the lift location is same as to what it was when we started. So we need a branch after uh, F, and 
and what we're going to do is say right click or actually get IL as well as get actor location now is actors location where we are now is it equal to initial location if it is equal then play it if it's not equal then reverse it compile and play I go on this I press F it goes up I press F it comes back down I press F it goes up I press F it comes back down now the problem is if I press F and I go up and if I try to jump down if I press F now my input is disabled and the lift will no longer come back down what we also want to do is say on component and overlap cast to third person character do disable the input but also reverse that as well so now if I go on it I press F it goes up I press F it comes back down I press F it goes up I'm not gonna press F I'm just gonna jump off if I jump off the lift will also come down as well so now we're not the lift is not stuck at the top now this is so far is what we've done inside of um, our lesson but because in the previous lesson we touched upon hot and hot system what we are going to do is try to see if we can get the lift to display a message on our HUD that says press if to activate so what we're going to do is go into our HUD system that we made earlier so I made it here I made it uh, hot score I'm gonna get another text I'm gonna put it down here I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger oops maybe put that in the uh, where is it? Uh, put it in the center and make it red just so that it becomes a little bit more visible let's have a look red now what we're gonna do is um, go ahead and get the uh, text to display a specific um, uh, message when we go on the lift so I'm going to compile this and let's go create a binding for this and <coughs> sorry okay so what we're going to do now is create a binding that's going to um, show us that message so what we're going to do is go back to our third person character's blueprint open that blueprint up and what we're going to do is create a variable on this I'm going to call this let's say game info for example a game message you just want to make sure that this is a uh, uh, so a string we can compile that so we have that information in there and even if you wanted to and even begin play we could set it to make sure this is nothing so as soon as the game starts at the end of that line of our event game, uh, event begin play, we can set that to nothing really. Okay, so there's nothing in there. Then what we're going to do is go on lift on F and say on component begin overlap, cast with third person character, and then drag from the blueprint set game info to whatever we want which is press F to activate lift compile and we'll leave the, um, uh, the, the, the lift then set game info to nothing and now notice how we have to disconnect the execution files uh, the pins from there to there as well from reverse and notice how we drag in the game info directly from casting the third person character and now back to our hot score we're going to create a binding for this so I'm going to say cast to third person character get player pawn and we're going to go ahead and say get game info and show us the game info if I compile and press play now when I go over the lift <coughs> press F to activate lift if I come off that will go away so 
Press F to activate lift. Get off, nothing shows. Press F to activate lift. There we go. So now that is a piece of information that pops up every time we enter this lift. And I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and I'll see you later. Thank you.